Hi, welcome to C-Sharp Best Practices. I'm Keith Welch, and I'm the instructor for this course. This course is all about writing better code. We want to create better structures and make our code more readable and more maintainable. So we're going to give you a number of tips and tricks and a little bit of architectural guidance in order to help you create better code that has fewer bugs and causes you less problems in the long run. No one really likes to support code. Everyone likes to create code. And if you can create better code from the start, you have less support. So that's really the goal of this course, is to give you some guidance in helping along with that. We also provide a little bit of guidance to help you get along with your teams. And that's one of our first best practices topics, is code style. Code style is essentially the way you format your source code. And that doesn't really have anything to do with the actual execution of the code. It's just about how to make the code more readable, and in particular, this topic comes up a lot when working with teams because people have different styles. The important thing is to agree on general styles that everyone can get along with. A lot of times organizations will come up with very detailed code style manuals and they're very rigid and that causes a lot of friction in teams. So we're going to give you some guidance, but again, it's guidance as opposed to hard and fast rules. We'll also talk some about architecture and we'll be talking about some object-oriented principles as well. And then we'll get into a little bit of tips. So we'll spend some time on code style, probably too much time. It's one of those things that developers seem to spend a lot of time on when they could be doing things that are more productive. Then we'll get into some things that are more productive, the solid principles. And these are some basic object-oriented principles. That if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, they should come naturally to you. But it's not a bad thing to have a reminder and a little bit of a checklist in your head when you're actually starting out a project. And then we'll have some general best practices, and we'll go through a number of different topics in those best practices. We'll spend a little bit of time, in particular, on exception handling. Exception handling is one of those things that people don't like to deal with. Of course, all of our code runs perfectly, so we don't actually need to handle any exceptions. This is a complete fallacy. We do need to handle exceptions. And we also need to have our code avoid creating exceptions when it's possible. We'll also get into Lambda expressions and link queue, or link. And we'll talk about those because those are relatively well-adapted Microsoft technologies, particular in ASP.NET in the MVC pattern. And we'll also talk about async methods. Async methods are a nice, easy way of handling threads. So we'll talk a bit about that. And then we'll get into some architectural patterns. We'll talk about two tier and three tier and some of the other basic patterns. And we'll spend a little bit more time on the model view controller pattern, and in particular, how it applies in ASP.NET. ASP.NET MVC is really the preferred pattern at this point for web forms. So we'll be talking about that, and we'll talk about best practices in using that pattern. So we've got a fair amount to cover, and it is a nice short course for you. So we're going to try to pack a lot into a relatively short amount of time. Let's get to it.